Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yeah, I got some more scopes. This one I got at a flea market some weeks ago. And it was really, really dirty. And nobody knew it if it was working or not. So I got it really, really cheap. And if you look now, I cleaned it up only using hot water. It is really, really nice and beautiful now. There's only uh, one little detail I can see here from the front, and that is this miss missing little knob here. But I mean, it's not a big deal. I've been poking around with all the, the knobs and switches, and it feels like everything is quite a good shape for its age when you hear this really good clicks and and the and the and buttons really feel clean and good so you know it's from a non-smoker yeah everything moves really really well i mean that is a surprise Oh, this one is a little bit stiff. All right, let's let's try and power this. What is this? Kikusui. Oh, that's impossible to say. Twenty megahertz oscilloscope, and the type is fifty twenty. All right, what is this? C O S. Hmm. Yeah, let's power it up. So I was on my way to power this up and uh, rotating the unit. And then I see missing feet and a big nasty dent missing screw. Here, this corner, there's also a little bit of transport damage. I mean, maybe I should try and open and see how is this. No, oh, hang on. Let's get a little bit of air. So is this correct? So D is the highest. So that, oh, that is good. Ooh, that is that is a funny voltage selector made in Taiwan. Definitely. Yeah, I chose to open this and have a little inspection before I power it up. Because I really don't want to blow it up or anything like that. But it looks uh, fairly alright. A lot of air in here. But everything looks exactly like it should be. Oh, you can see it's been running quite a lot of hours. Can you see how nice and clean the red wire is? But the brown wire is very, very dirty. And that is, a, that is of course, because of the voltage. So there's a lot of high voltage that sucks uh, uh, dust to it see the other wires here and then those two brown wires that's dust so that will be high voltage stuff yeah but i was looking for any burned or brown parts here we got the high voltage uh, section and there's an additional isolation so when you're poking around here you don't accidentally touch stuff so that is good but it also prevent cooling and you can see some of the hot areas we got a little bit of brown and this type of plastic is probably not made for very very high temperatures for a long long time so that could be a, a good thing to clean this but i think i we're ready to power it up i was also looking for the date code on the CRT because normally you will find uh, date codes uh, handwritten or stamped and that is uh, not the case otherwise maybe this is a code 1A1 I don't know what that is just too bad so I have to look at the IC codes but I will have to go through that later I will just have to power it up first I don't see any delay line either Maybe it's hidden somewhere else, I don't know. 
no delay line. Okay, power up. Let's do this together just for the fun of it. So let's... Mains is here. 30 watts. I see a little bit of light. So that is the illumination. Yes. That is a line. Can we get alternating mode? Yes, that is the other channel. Oh, look at that noise. That is not so good. We definitely got... Ooh, hey, look at that. It's all the way down here. And the other one is good. Okay, so that one is channel two. Let's dial that. Yeah, and it stays. We just have to massage that switch a little bit, right? And this one. Okay. And it's all the way. I'll have to play a little bit more with this, and then we can have a little chat about what I found. So, this is the alternating mode. We are running in slow sweep. So it's doing one, the other one. So that is perfectly fine. And then chop is doing both of them at the same time. So chop is very good for low sweeps. What you see here is actually a camera shutter thing. So what I see here is two lines. That is funny with the shutter. So now we see two time, uh, two uh, curves on the camera, and that is of course the alternating mode. This is absolutely useless to demonstrate uh, on a camera with shutter times this fast. How crazy is that? Because what I wanted to show is if we go real fast. Um, okay, th this is visible now. So in chop mode, you can actually see the chop if you're using chop in faster sweep times then you get something like this and of course then you switch to alternating mode and get two lines as long as you know that it's actually a new sweep and, and a new trick so that means uh, for every trigger uh, it's doing one and the other one right so if there was an event on one channel and that was the one you tricked on then you need to wait for the next trick and then see the next event on the other channel so they might not uh, align if it's a digital thing you're uh, investigating so this is just a regular how to use a scope kind of thing all the problems i have with the channels here that is the only related to the switches see this it's just loose connection see now the here look at that how dodgy that is so all the problem is just Context and both of them here. I just do if I move this a little bit. So what I will do now, I will try and clean those two switches and see if that is solving that problem. The time base switch is just absolutely fantastic and perfect and stable. It's doing exactly what I expect. And what else? Focus is working. And this is a very good idea uh, when you're a playing around with old scopes, check if focus is more or less in the middle, because that will reveal if the power supply, high voltage stuff is more or less okay, because that will move focus point out of the sensor point here. And that is more or less how it is. So this way I am super happy. I, this is actually quite bright. Okay. Oh, I was outside cleaning this with compressed air and a paint brush. So now it is nice and clean. I took away this uh, plastic for the cleaning process. 
So this covers the high voltage section. And now we can see it is really nice and clean. Of course you want all this high voltage stuff to be uh, really, really cl uh, clean because it sucks up humidity and dust. And this is definitely going to uh, shorten the life of uh, good old electronics. But what else can I say about this uh, design? They have um, actually added some labels now and then. And that makes it a lot easier to service. Also on the other board, remember we, uh, we have problems with the switches, uh, the gain switches for the two channels. And as you see here, the two um, switches for that, they are very, very open. But when I look at the contacts, they don't really seem that dirty. But there is actually a thin layer of, I don't know, smock, whatever you want to call it. Some stuff. So that is why I want to clean the. This is, this is before uh, contact cleaning, but I just wanted to inspect what we got first. I'm also looking a lot, uh, around uh, for date codes, and I think that one down there is the... Uh, it will focus on the wires. That is annoying. That one. Come on. Come, new man. That is some stupid camera. I think I see a 93 on the newest IC. So that is what I will call this scope from 1993. See, this is all the analog and all the input stages. See what I'm saying about... Ooh, we have a focus problem. See, they added all those little labels so you can figure out what is going on. Channel 2 gain. Channel 1 gain. Trick DC. I mean, this is just really, really nice because I don't have a schematic or anything. And so far, I didn't find anything to repair other than cleaning the contacts. But if you were to uh, repair this, it's just a nice help. And that will be the deflection amplifier transistors right there. And the, the high voltage, the real bad high voltage is in here. So that is a vertical deflection. So right here we will have deflection transistors right here. NP and NP and P. In the good old days, the P and P was green, while all the NPNs, they were black. <laughs> I like that. That is a typical uh, Japanese transistor uh, idea. So you see the left and the right. We got those four transistors for for the deflection. But there is no delay line in the vertical amplification here, so that is just bad luck. So while I'm cleaning all the contacts, why not also clean the knobs a little bit and I mean look why this is gross isn't it all this old dirt in here you need to have it nice and clean again you know like that just takes a little bit of time so now we're back after super cleaning of course it works. <laughs> oh, that is so classic. Look at that. Now the curve of the trace is not affected by the attenuators. You see? Even that works. Because I cleaned everything here. Nice and stable, nice and great. Ha <laughs> ha, happy, happy. It is that easy. Play a little bit more with this scope and do a little bit of performance testing. So this is a 10 kilohertz square wave on channel two, all right? 
same settings. Look at that. I didn't move anything. I just went from channel two to channel one. Look at that signal. Okay. There isn't any multiplier here. So now I crank down the signal so we can see it. Oops. That's our 10 kilohertz signal. And look at the difference as well in amplitude. There is definitely a problem in channel one. Oh no. I figured this out. Look at this. This is the same signal going into two channels. Oh, we also got a little bit of a loose connection. So this is a 10 kilohertz signal into both of the channels. I am playing with channel one that is having a defect. But look at that. Now it's really nice and good. And that is in the most sensitive range. So look at that. One, two, three. Right, one, two, three, four good ranges. Okay, then I crank up the input signal. Okay, like that, right? So now we take the next five. Oi, here's bad five, six, seven. Look at that, five, six, seven. Okay, those are bad. Now I crank up the input level again like that and look now good again and good and good let's look at the schematic it was real easy to look up uh, the schematic on the internet i didn't expect that but it's super super easy this is the front end and of course what i did was i count the different settings see the first four, they're good. The next three, they're bad. And then the next three, they're good again. So it can only be this section is what I need to find. So there's a one to 10 attenuator here at the input. And it's also very clear that that you, you are able to blow this up because then it's connected to the input. So somebody was in one of these three ranges input way too much and blow up uh, one of the resistors in this divider. So this is what I need to find. I was so afraid it was this because there's a, an attenuator network here, but it can't be that because we repeat to use the different steps in that one. And if it's good here and if it's good here, that means we are using, we are reusing the different parts in this attenuator. So that all this has to work and all the rest of this amplifier and chopper and everything else has to work. It can only be here in the very, very near the input attenuator here. This is what I need to find. I always see if there's any indication on the different connectors like this on the PCB. And like you see here, they're called different numbers so when i pull collectors i write on them with a permanent marker where they're supposed to go because you can see they look a lot like the same that p24 and p5 and you mean you mean you could easily plug in some stuff here wrong and then you're going to blow up everything so that is a good uh, idea to do that i really need to take out this entire input uh, pcb what i did is i selected the ranges on both of them where this is selected and then I use a DC meter just to verify what is going on here and I do see some differences between <laughs> the one and the other and that was actually quite easy just to measure around here um, on the top points here they, they've been really really nice and friendly with the indications here see 1 to 10 1 to 10. So th I know this is the area I need to poke around in. Here's uh, the first deck of the switch. And then we've got some different resistors and stuff. So it's super easy to measure the different resistors and what's going on. And there's definitely a difference. By the way, this is the channel that works. 
Look at that resistor. Nice and brown, but it still works. And the other one is not so nice at it. There is not this problem. <laughs> so I expect to find another blown up resistor. Sometimes you just underestimate <laughs> a challenge. This one seems to be so darn simple and so darn obvious. I'm like, in those three steps, it's not working. But it's working here and it's working here. So what the heck is wrong? It can only be two resistors, right? I mean, okay, this is a switch that's also connected to that switch and all that, right? And and I got a good channel. So this is the, the board. And then I got a bad channel. Now I've been poking out the resistors of the bad channel, measuring them, and then putting them back in. This time I put them on the top side so I can easier um, scope things and measure things and figuring things out. But it just seems to um, be a continuous annoying difference. I even marked it here so it's easier for me to not screw this up. Of course, uh, also changed a few resistors, also some of the brown ones that's actually in the OK channel. But uh, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to show you this uh, input board, the attenuators, and uh, the amplifiers. And what you see here, all those diodes, that's actually the chop selector stuff. And then we go into the vertical amplifier. This cable here is, of course, the delay line. This is where you could have put in a delay line. Here's just very short. Uh, the idea is, of course, you can put in a very, very long um, yeah, delay line, and then your trace will be able to show the start of what it's actually triggering on. But it's just not implemented in this um, scope. So since the top board here, well, the bottom board, obviously, <laughs> uh, is out, it's much easier to see the time base. That'll be the time base switch down there. And that'll be all the time base components. Well, we can't really see a lot because we've got all those um, cables and plugs and stuff in their way. And that will be the power supply. It's, uh, of course, looking really nice and pretty now because I cleaned it up. Oh, yeah. This one is the trace rotation coil. So there is a coil in here. And then there is a DC voltage on this to actually move the picture. So... You will have a line that follows the grid on your screen. Oh man, I was having a little victory dance around here and actually annoying my wife a little bit because ha, that dumb scope actually drove me totally nuts. But look what happens here. This is channel one, right? We are now in the low, low. And let's crank up the signals here and let's go so that is <laughs> winner winner chicken for dinner oh man I'm happy <laughs> but I also must say <laughs> it took me the whole day to figure out those damn resistors <sighs> that was annoying why is that so difficult no my classic uh, one microsecond pulse at 100 kilohertz trying to get a little bit of light in here so we can see the the lines or the grid on the on the screen so obviously there is no vertical um, delay line in this scope so this is why you don't see the rising pulse let me try and uh, yeah I actually had the trigger as low as possible See if I take it up, see almost nothing, right? So that is, of course, how it is. There is a little funny, funny thing here, but that is also because I am running a, a 50 ohm 
termination here and I am running a very very nasty fall time here what I can do is that is 10 nanosecond look at that 40 nanosecond 50 nanoseconds and then it's nice and uh, fine right so let's try and see the maximum frequency this one can do so this is one megahertz that's a good starter let's try and crank up the frequency to oh, that goes way too slow 10 megahertz and then we go so that's half of what it's rated and now i am at full speed here 200 nanoseconds per division and that is as i said 10 to, what i didn't expect that so that's 20 and then 30 40 okay that's 30 megahertz look at that and there we go i think i can pull this yes Oi. what do you call that i call that a Oi, 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 oi. What is going on? Let me crank up the... <laughs> what do you call this? I don't know. I have never seen anything like that. Okay, let's try with 20 megahertz and see if it's still a thing. Yes, it is. Hapa hapa, funny, funny. Look at that funky shape. I mean, that is a new one. So let's go 10 megahertz, okay? And it's still there. What kind of a funk? So that is, yeah. Because we don't have it here, right? So it is the variable. Oh my God. And this is, holy camoly. What do you call that? <laughs> I need to stop this. <laughs> I need to take a picture. Okay, that is just a funny fault I found here. So time base, right? Variable time base works perfectly fine. Click. But when you pull this, you go in times 10. So a pull here should be the same as tick tick, right? But look at that. Now it gets wide and weird. And that is because there is modulation on the time base when it is in times 10. This this is what you see here, right? Because if I go in single... Oops. How is that possible? That should only be a single sweep, right? Ah! Okay, okay, now I know why. Because when it is doing its sweep, it's going backwards and forwards. Uh, so there is a uh, funny kind of modulation, yes, on that sweep going that way, right? So it's actually going backwards and forwards. And that is why when we were in, in a really, really fast one, it was going backwards and forward like that, right? So the times 10 is absolutely crap. <laughs> oh, that is funny. I've actually, actually never, ever seen anything like this before. So that is brand new to me. But other than that, this scope is tip top. Well, let's look a little bit on the schematic. Um, obviously, there is a uh, problem in the sweep, but the sweep itself is actually working really good. So if you look at this little snip from the um, schematic, you see I power, uh, added a little red arrow. So this is the sweep from the sweep generator stuff. And then uh, you see the times 10 magnification. Uh, I wrote OK, so it's when the switch is in the right position, everything is perfectly fine. And that means uh, only Q503 uh, and 504, they are active. Uh, all right. And uh, then the negative 12 volts goes into the, the center point of uh, R506 and 507. And that creates the amplification factor for a uh, normal sweep. But now if you want to go into times 10, you need now 10 times as high uh, amplification factor, right? And this is what Q501 and 502 are doing. So by putting the, the negative uh, five, 12 volt into the, the two bases of those two transistors, uh, they become active, just fully active. And then the resistor to the left 
the two collectors that is called uh, R503. Uh, that is actually a factor 10 lower resistance compared to uh, R506 and 507. So now uh, this resistor is uh, via the two um, transistors. Uh, coupled in parallel with the other resistors and now you have 10 times the magnification factor uh, very very simple uh, circuit to do that however when this circuit is activated uh, everything goes unstable we get uh, uh, oscillations in uh, this circuit so here we go this is the plus 5 volt I added a little SMD capacitor here to the left of that wide track here, that is the plus 5 volt, and that is of course deeply connected to the different transistors in this deflection circuit, and that one was definitely affected by this oscillations, so I added this, this um, SMD capacitor of 100 nanofarad, but then I also added another 100 nanofarad um, capacitor on this signal here and this is the selector signal for the times 10 magnification so this track i follow this track all the way to the switch so here's a connector and that connector goes to that switch so when you pull this switch a negative um, 12 volt goes to the two resistors here and into the two transistors and so forward you just saw the schematic so now we can turn on the scope and we are now in um, full speed mode and we should have a picture shortly here we go so this is a 10 megahertz uh, signal and if i if i go times 10 now you'll see it is almost perfectly fine there is actually a little bit of distortion and but it's i mean it is a million times better compared to before right so I, I would call this problem solved. And uh, if this is 11 megahertz, if I go like 12, 13, 14, yeah, here we go. Here you can see it. this is 20 megahertz, but this is also the maximum frequency of the scope anyway. 20, 21, 22, and so on. And then it goes actually good again. So there's a little bit of distortion in the sweep, and this is like, 30, 40, 50, I think I could actually, yes I can, here is 50 megahertz by the way. So I will call this a uh, scope, fixed, solved and done. Now we'll just put in the switches and put on the little screws and uh, make it nice and shiny. So thank you very much for watching. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.